Hello, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. I'm excited to have you with us. Uh, we are finishing our series in Jonah tonight, and I've really enjoyed the time in the scripture. Excited to finish things out, excited to see uh, the Lord's heart uh, for people in this chapter. Uh, just a reminder that we are meeting in person on Wednesday night, 7 p.m., and uh, doing the same studies we've been doing online, doing those in person. So a uh, real blessing to be able to get together, to pray with one another, to fellowship together, and uh, certainly following those uh, social distancing guidelines while doing that, uh, but it has been such a blessing. So if you've enjoyed the online studies um, but uh, would like to get involved in that fellowship, uh, please join us here at Harbor Light Baptist Church at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evenings. Uh, we are, like I said, finishing up um, here in Jonah chapter 4. So if you've got your Bible, you can get that out and turn to Jonah chapter 4 and verse number 5. Uh, as always, feel free to leave a comment or uh, send a message. Let us know if you have any prayer requests. And uh, we'd love to be praying for you. If you're a part of our church family, we want to be praying for one another. If uh, you're not involved in our ministry, we want to minister to you by praying for you. So make sure you send those comments and messages in, and uh, we'll be sure to be praying for you. All right, Jonah chapter 4 and verse number 5. I'll pull that up on the screen so you can follow along as I read out loud. All right, Jonah chapter 4 and verse number five, it says there, So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd, but God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass, when the sun did arise, that God pre prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, that he fainted, and wished in himself to die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, Do thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night, and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? All right, well, let's uh, ask the Lord to bless our time in the Word tonight. Just a quick prayer and asking for the Lord's help. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your heart, uh, your love for the world on display in the book of Jonah. Uh, what a, a revealing view uh, into your love for us, your care for all people. Uh, I do pray you'd help us as we wrestle with what that means for us, for those that know the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what what does that mean? How do we relate to the world? And uh, Lord, just uh, give us insight into that. Lord, if there's one listening tonight who's never put their faith and trust in Jesus, I, I pray they'd be moved by your love, your compassion, and your mercy, uh, especially as found in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they'd have a desire to come to him for salvation. Guide us now as we look into your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, if uh, you've been with us these past few weeks, you've walked with us through the book of Jonah, and uh, you've seen how God gave this prophet a message uh, the prophet refused to go to the city of Nineveh and preach that message. Uh, you can see at the beginning of chapter 4 that he knew God is rich in mercy and that God is forgiving. Uh, he, he's, he's filled with great kindness, chapter 4 and verse 2 says. And uh, Jonah did not want to see that kindness extended to his enemies, the people of Nineveh. So he ran from the Lord, uh, the Lord in his patience, the Lord in his care for Jonah um, through the events in chapter 1 and chapter 2 um, brings Jonah to Nineveh. It's a rough journey for, uh, for, for Jonah, uh, but the Lord gets him there uh, through the, the great fish that he sent and the three days and nights that Jonah spent in that fish's belly. Uh, well, we get to chapter 3, Jonah preaches, and the Ninevites do exactly what he feared they would do. They repent, and they turn to God. Now, you would think if, if the prophet of God, if that message was so well received and the people repented, uh, that he'd be filled with joy that uh, God's message had, had done his work. 
uh, but instead Jonah is filled with anger. And you can see where we picked up uh, tonight in verse number five that he has now moved outside the city. Uh, seems that you know there's a possibility uh, he's kind of waiting for those 40 days that he preached about in chapter three and verse number four. Maybe he's waiting for those 40 days to to come about, come to fruition, come to pass, so that he can see uh, if those Ninevites really repented. They really mean it was a real repentance. And I, I kind of picture him out there. He's kind of got his fingers crossed. He's hoping. Uh, that God will still destroy them. And so you can see the state of Jonah's heart. It's a heart that's filled with hatred toward the Ninevites, a heart that's filled with anger that God would extend mercy to this heathen people. Uh, Jonah certainly had enjoyed that mercy when it came to him in chapter 2 as he prays to God, uh, but um, unwilling to extend that mercy to the Ninevites. And so you can see the state of Jonah's heart. You can see that utter failure as a prophet of God, as God's man, the utter failure to understand God's heart and to have that uh, that same love toward the Ninevites uh, that God had toward Jonah and God had uh, toward those Assyrian people. Uh, but Jonah really is just kind of a, a picture, a small picture of the larger problem with the nation of Israel. Uh, it seems as if God is using Jonah, this one man, uh, to point out the heart of the nation of Israel. You see, God has always designed for his people to be uh, a group of missionaries. Uh, whether that was Abraham who, who sojourned um, in the promised land and, and was to be an example to those that he came across and, and was to be a missionary influence. Or, or if it was uh, later on, uh, the Israelites, God talks about how he brought them out of the land as a demonstration of who he was and, and his power. And then when he brings them into the promised land, uh, they're supposed to be uh, a missionary nation. Uh, and so the Lord talks about, it, especially in the prophets, uh, as he addresses his people, he, he talks about their failure to do that, their failure uh, to love others. Uh, outside the nation of Israel by being faithful and true to their God and displaying who God was. So he says in places like Isaiah 48 and verse number 11, as he talks about how he brought them into captivity, he says this, For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Um, the people of Israel were supposed to be displaying God's goodness and God's holiness and God's greatness, and they miserably failed to do that. And so the Lord says, I'm, I'm going to judge you uh, for that. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse number 9, he says, But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen, among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. So again, God designed his people to be like a city on a hill that would shine, uh, would be salt and light uh, amongst the Gentile nations, and they would, they would see uh, God's glory, God's holiness in his people, and uh, God's name would be glorified. Uh, but sadly, they failed. Uh, the people of God failed in internally. Um, Ezekiel is full of uh, of woe to the shepherds or the leaders of Israel that uh, says in places like Ezekiel 34, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Uh, so there's these internal failures and and the prophets of God talked about that. They talked about their treatment of the poor and the underprivileged and, and how uh, the people of Israel, they, they, they gave lip service, but they didn't truly uh, obey God's law and, and, and seek after that same kind of mercy uh, that he had towards them. And there were external, external failures, you know, the, the successes uh, in the Old Testament seem to be few and far between. You, you see people like Rahab and, and Ruth who, you know, that's kind of you know, how, how it was supposed to operate. You know, they, as the heathen see God's people, they see God providing for them. They see the mightiness, the holiness, um, uh, all those attributes of God. They are to, to tremble, as Rahab says, their hearts melted within them, and, and she desired to know that one true God. But sadly, 
uh, Israel was mostly marked by those failures, failure to be that missionary nation that God wanted them to be. And instead of them having an influence on the world around them and being different and being holy and set apart, often you see the Israelites were uh, accepting foreign morals and foreign gods, and uh, they were enjoying God's blessing as a people of God, but not extending that mercy to others. And so Jonah, Jonah's one guy we like to beat up, okay? Uh, but he is just showing the, the much larger picture uh, of, of that problem in the nation of Israel. And I, I think as we look at it from uh, you know, today's perspective as the people of God, as the church of God, as I look at it as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I, I see the heart that God has for, for people, and I see Jonah's wicked heart. And uh, it's easy for me to kind of cast a sideways glance at him and, and wonder, what in the world were you thinking, Jonah? Uh, but then I look, at, I look at the church at large. I look at my own heart, and I, I wonder, uh, has the church failed? Do we view the world the same way Jonah did? Uh, that uh, we've certainly enjoyed God's mercy. We've enjoyed the blessings of knowing Christ. But have we been willing to extend that to others? And so that's where we find Jonah. Jonah is angry. Uh, God has asked him that question in verse number four. Do thou well to be angry? Jonah's answer is yes. <laughs> I, I want to be angry. Uh, I am mad that you've saved these people. I'm mad that they've repented. I wanted to see them destroyed. They're wicked. They're evil. They don't deserve your mercy. And so God, in his continued mercy, in his continued patience, is actually going to give Jonah an illustration of, uh, of God's own heart. And so you can see, picking up in verse number six, we've already read it, uh, God sends this plant to Jonah. Jonah's outside the city. Uh, he's there. The sun's beating down on him. He builds himself a little shelter. Evidently, still not really satisfactory. It's it's still he's still somewhat exposed to the elements. And so you can see in verse number six uh, that it says the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah. Uh, it says in uh, verse number eleven that that came up in a night, grew up very quickly. Uh, not ex I'm not exactly sure what type of plant this was, but uh, many seem to think it's probably a castor oil plant, which can can grow very quickly, uh, can um, uh, really get to kind of tree-like proportions. And uh, the Lord sends this up. It provides Jonah uh, with a shelter. And it's, it's interesting. It says in verse number six, Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. The only time that you see Jonah glad in this book, it's not when God is saving him. <laughs> it's not when uh, God saves the people of Nineveh. It's not when the sailors have have turned to God. No, Jonah's glad when his selfish desires are fulfilled. Uh, so the Lord provides this plant. It gives Jonah shelter. But then uh, he, he has that for about a day, it seems. And uh, it says in verse number seven, God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day. It smote the gourd that it withered. And so uh, Jonah's plant that he was enjoying, he's enjoying the shade. God sends this worm. It destroys that plant. Uh, the shelter, the shade is gone. Uh, if, jo if that didn't cause Jonah to miss the plant uh, enough, the Lord then sends, it says in verse number eight, uh, a vehement east wind. And so this hot uh, wind comes in. It's beating down on Jonah. Jonah despairs in verse number eight. He again has these uh, suicidal uh, words coming out of his mouth. It's better that I were dead. I wish I were dead. Uh, it's better for me to die than to live. And so the Lord had brought that wind in and it says that Jonah is in verse number nine angry for that plant. Okay. Uh, and God asks him this question, Jonah, doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. So again, God had sent this plant. Jonah enjoyed the shelter, the shade. God takes that plant away, sends this east wind. Jonah is angry about the plant. Jonah had spent his time in these verses uh, pitying something, loving something that he had not worked for, labored for, or poured his time into. 
He was loving this plant, this thing that served him, that gratified his desires. Uh, again, this is the only time that Jonah is glad. It's over a plant, never a person, and never the Lord. And so God gives this. He, he allows the circumstance to happen as an illustration to Jonah of the heart of God. So we've seen Jonah's heart. We've seen the illustration, and now let's, let's think about how God is using that to show Jonah uh, his heart for the people. Uh, see, God had allowed Jonah to enjoy a plant that Jonah didn't work for. Uh, I was with a friend earlier this week. She was showing me some of her garden that she had labored in, uh, that she had watered, that she had cared for. There were some heartaches in that garden as uh, some of her plants had gotten a fungus and they didn't get the harvest they wanted. There was joy in that garden and uh, there's just something special about um, something you've put effort into and, and worked for. It, it caused you to love and, and care for that thing and have an affection for it. Uh, but uh, this plant... Jonah hadn't labored in it. Jonah hadn't cared for it. Uh, but still, he, he pitied <laughs> this gourd. And God says, you know what? Uh, I have a, a heart for this city. And he draws Jonah atten Jonah's attention to that uh, in verse number 10 and verse number 11. He says, you pitied something that you never worked for or labored for or cared for, that you didn't shed tears over, uh, that you, you didn't labor over. Uh, but Jonah, I love the city of Nineveh. It's a great city, it says in verse number 11. And the Lord mentions that there are six score thousand persons, that's 120,000 persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand. Uh, as far as I can tell from reading and, and just trying to, trying to think that through in the commentaries I've read, that's probably referring uh, to young people that can't discern between their right and their left. And I don't know about you, sometimes I still have to do that and, and think about, okay, where's the L? That's the left hand. That's the left side. Well, these young people. If this is if this is maybe maybe three year olds, four year olds, um, and um, you can find an average that that would be about one fifth of the population, you're looking at somewhere a city in the realm of six hundred to seven hundred thousand people. It's a huge city. It says that it was a city. It took you three days to to travel across uh, the, the 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 breadth of this city. And uh, the Lord says, this great city, it's huge. There's a huge amount of people here. And uh, Jonah, I love those people. i like you to think about this, the size of that city and all the people that were therein. I, I know the Ninevites were wicked. The Assyrians were wicked. They were wicked people. Uh, they were violent people. But you think about this from the Lord's perspective. Uh, God has labored for these people. He's created them. Uh, the Psalms is very clear that life is precious. And one of the reasons that is precious is uh, places like Psalm 139, uh, where the Lord talks about how he knows us. Uh, before we were even formed, he knew us. And uh, he, he guided that creation. Uh, he's the creator. He knows each one. And you think about that city filled with 600 or 700,000 uh, people. And um, you, you think about how many souls were there in that city and the labor that God had poured into those children and those adults. He had created them and nourished them. He loved them. He, he, had, he had made a missionary nation in the people of Israel. And you think about how much he's invested in the people of Israel. And one of the reasons he's done that is to show his glory to people uh, like the Ninevites. God has labored over these people, and now he's, he's invested his prophet in sending his prophet to give this message uh, to tell the Ninevites to turn from their wicked ways and turn to the God of heaven. Think about the labor that God has poured into these people. And if Jonah can love a plant that uh, came up in a night and disappeared the next day and, and, and that Jonah had put no effort or work into, uh, then we can understand the depth of love God would have for the people in the city of Nineveh. Oh, a huge group of souls, okay? We often look at people and think about 
you know, their, their, maybe their evil works or their worst characteristics, but each one of those people in that city was an eternal soul. And God had labored over them. He created them and he created them so that they would know him. And he's got a love for them. Uh, look at the importance of each life there. God even mentions in verse number 11, the cattle. Each life is important. And God feels that way about each soul. There's a love uh, that he has toward these people. Um, Romans 5 eight says this, But God commendeth or, or demonstrates, shows his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And God has that same love for the Ninevites. Uh, he sends Jonah to them to warn them of the coming judgment, uh, just as he's loved us and sent the Lord Jesus Christ to save us from our sins. And so this illustration of the plant uh, shows how that plant that uh, that Jonah didn't labor for or, or work for, uh, that it could capture Jonah's love. And God says, these people that I created in my image, that I've labored over, that I've nourished, that I've, that I've brought up from the adults down to the children. I love these people. And I desire that they would turn from their wicked ways and that they would know the God of heaven. Well, what a heart God has for missions. What a heart God has to get his name out there. What a heart God has for everyone to know him and to fellowship with him. Uh, in contrast to this prophet's heart, and uh, I, I, it's a kind of a strange ending, but I, I believe a purposeful one. As the Lord leaves this kind of open-ended for us to, to consider, uh, do we have the heart of God? Uh, will, how will we respond uh, to those that are around us? Uh, how will we respond to the work God has called us to work? And uh, we don't necessarily see Jonah's response here, although as I was thinking of this today, you know, somebody had to go back and tell this story to the people of God. Somebody had to write this down, and I guess I would imagine it was Jonah who probably did that. And uh, so maybe he had a change of heart, as the Lord explains uh, through this illustration of the plant, uh, his love for people. Well, a few quick thoughts to consider as we've gone through this story. We've seen the Lord's love uh, for the people of Nineveh uh, in spite of their wickedness, which really when you look at it, the prophet here, uh, the chosen one, <laughs> the one that God had uh, put his hand on, his calling on, that prophet's just as wicked um, as, uh, as any of these Assyrian people. And, and he needed the mercy of God just as the Assyrians needed the mercy of God. But a few thoughts to consider. Uh, first of all, as I, I kind of wrestle and struggle with loving others and giving the gospel and, and being a missionary myself, I want to start by considering God's love. And uh, what, a, what a beautiful illustration we have here in this passage uh, we've referred to a few other scriptures uh, tonight, uh, but what a beautiful illustration with this plant and, and beautiful thoughts in verse number 11 where, where God just uh, gets down to these, uh, these young people, these uh, six score thousand persons that can't discern between their right and left hands. And we, we see God's heart for these people. And, and just like Jonah had loved this plant, um, but uh, multiply that by a million times, God loved the Ninevites. And so consider God's love. God loved us just as we are just as wicked as any person walking the streets of Nineveh, but God loved us enough to send his son. Uh, it says in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. And uh, as I consider uh, people God has called me to love, sometimes they're very unlovely. Uh, sometimes they don't look like me. Uh, sometimes they do things that I don't appreciate and I don't like. Sometimes they're, they seem opposed to, to everything that God has called me to do. Uh, but God says, I, I love those same people. And uh, so consider the Lord's love. Consider his love to you and consider the grace and mercy that God has extended to you. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior? I love as Paul writes to the Corinthians, he lists this whole list of sins that you know we wouldn't find acceptable uh, on a, on a Sunday. You know, those are kind of the kind of things we don't talk about. But he lists those sins, and he says, "And such were some of you." Oh, God, in His mercy and His grace, He's He's saved you out of that. If you know Christ as your Savior, 
All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so if you've put your faith and trust in Christ, this is a great opportunity as I think about God's love toward the world to consider um, that I'm not so far removed from that. Uh, Yes, God has changed me. Uh, God has saved me, but I never want to forget that Christ was necessary. It was necessary for God to save me. There was nothing good or uh, nothing charming about me or about my life. There's, there's no way I earned my salvation. It was all of Christ. And so if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, what a time as we look at God's love to be overwhelmed by his love and patience toward us. If you've never put your faith and trust in Christ, man, what a beautiful picture here in Jonah to see God's love for you. And uh, an opportunity for you to, to consider God's patience and his mercy towards you. And here, as you've heard tonight, uh, God desires to save your soul. And uh, it's as simple as turning from your sin and turning and putting your faith and trust in Christ. Uh, not in your good works, uh, not in your family name, not in whether or not you go to church, but, uh, but putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. He died in your place. He died for you. That's how much God loves you. God loves the Ninevites enough to send a prophet, and God loved you enough to send his son to die in your place and take your punishment upon himself. And so today is the day of salvation. Tonight even, you can uh, pray and receive Christ as your Savior. If you need more help with that, more if there's something you don't understand about that but you're interested, send us a message, leave us a comment. We'd love to get together with you and show you from God's Word how you can know for sure that your sins are forgiven and you've received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. But as I consider God's love and I, I consider his grace and mercy toward me, as and as Paul says, I, I'm the chiefest of sinners, <laughs> then I want to extend that grace and mercy to others. And uh, Jonah has so far not seemed to get it. I, I hope and, and I think and I pray he probably got it uh, here after the Lord gives this illustration of the gourd. Uh, but I want to I receive this. I want to get this, that God loved me. And now God desires for me to extend that grace and mercy to others uh, that he loves. And so I'm going to obey the Lord and tell others about Jesus. You know, the Great Commission in Matthew 28 says this, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. It doesn't say to make just disciples of those that are easy or agreeable. It doesn't say to make disciples out of those that are just like us. It doesn't say to make disciples out of those that are in the same tribe or political party or socioeconomic strata as we are. It says go and and teach all nations. And so as I've enjoyed God's mercy and God's love, and as I've seen here in Jonah that he desires to extend that mercy and grace to all people, and he desires for me to be uh, to be a missionary, to go to all nations, as Matthew 28 says. I'm going to obey the Lord and tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they may not always receive it well. They may not always look like likely candidates. But I want to obey the God who loved me enough to send his son to die for my sins. Uh, I want to, as Matthew 5 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And I I wonder if you and I would get on the same page as the Lord. (laughs) You see this patience God has, and I know he's been patient with me. Uh, We've beaten Jonah up a little bit um, in these last few weeks and just kind of talked about how stubborn he was. But you know what? I see a lot of myself in Jonah and I don't want to miss the opportunities that God sets before me, uh, to tell others about his great love, to tell others, uh, of, of his redeeming love, to tell others that he sent his son, uh, to die for their sins and, uh, and how much he loves them. And so, um, I, I pray this would be a, a time as we finish out this study, where we can uh, renew our commitment to the Lord to love others and to obey his commands, uh, to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ, to give the gospel, and and to be soul winners. And uh, so, wonderful time to make that commitment to the Lord. And even as we close in prayer, I I, I pray that that would be uh, the commitment of your heart. And uh, it's uh, it goes against our flesh, um, in in our own flesh, in our own way, in our own our own heart. Okay, we're all Jonah. And so we need to be meditating on the mind of God. And I am so thankful uh, for this book, kind of an unusual book for the Old Testament, uh, but a very clear insight into God's heart and a reminder uh, of of our our duty uh, to know him 
and to love him. And out of that love for him and obedience to tell others uh, about who he is and their need to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Let's have a word of prayer. And as I do that, I hope you'll renew your commitment to tell others about Jesus Christ. Father, we do thank you for time spent in this study here in the book of Jonah. Uh, Lord, we, we pray that you would help us to receive uh, what you have for us here. Uh, Lord, what a wonderful glimpse into your heart. And I, I pray that we would have that same heart to others. And Lord, I, I know each of us have our own prejudices and our own uh, biases. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to see the wickedness in that. Lord, it's easy to see the wickedness in Jonah's heart. Uh, but Lord, I pray you'd help us to be introspective enough uh, to consider our own wickedness and our own favoritism and uh, our own biases or prejudices. And uh, Lord, I, I pray that you'd help us to confess that to you. And then Lord, uh, desire uh, to see our hearts changed to be in line with your heart your love for the world, your love for all people. Uh, thank you for this illustration here at the end of the book of Jonah. And just, Lord, we see your heart overflowing with love for the people that you've created, the souls that you've made, and and, and the lives that you've nourished and, and brought up, and how you desire for them, all nations, to know of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that we would do our part. Uh, Lord, I, I pray we'd be renewed in our commitment to tell uh, every soul that we can about the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I know there are many that uh, uh, seem to be unlovely at times. And so, Lord, I pray we'd go back to your love for us. <laughs> we, were, we were yet enemies, but you still loved us. Uh, you commended your love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, help us to remember that, dwell on that, and then be ready to go out there and tell others. Again, Lord, thank you for Jonah. Thank you for your patience toward uh, a stubborn servant. Thank you for your patience toward us. But Lord, I do pray that you'd use your people uh, to love others and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for joining us during this time. Uh, Bible study here in the book of Jonah. Uh, we'll be starting some uh, new things next week. We'll tell you about that um, uh, during our uh, video next week. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to continuing on in God's Word. Let me remind you that we have Wednesday night Bible study, 7 p.m. Same studies we've been going over here online, but in person, a time of socially distanced fellowship, a time of prayer, uh, just a good time to see one another and, and share our hearts. And um, we're going over the same stuff. So if, if you'd enjoy, if you've enjoyed the Bible teaching, uh, then I'd encourage you to be out here for the fellowship, Harbor Light Baptist Church, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Uh, we have our live streams um, Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. and uh, then we're meeting here in person as well Sunday night 6 p.m. and uh, looking forward to that time really enjoyed last Sunday night it was a huge blessing to be with God's people and uh, we're following uh, uh, procedures and practices that are going to keep us safe and uh, be in uh, compliance with what other businesses again I don't consider the church a business but uh, what uh, businesses have been asked to do. And so I think you'll enjoy it. I think it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, but that's uh, Sunday night, 6 p.m., uh, as well as our Sunday morning service at 10.30 a.m. Well, thank you for joining us. Let us know if we can pray for you, and we'll see you uh, next time here uh, for our Wednesday night Bible study. Good night.